Hi, everybody. My name is Pete Frizzella. I'm a developer advocate on the Google Analytics team. I'd like to introduce you to a new series we have called Off the Charts. Um, this series is about getting into the deep features of Google Analytics, understanding how it works, things you can do with it, and how to, how to use the feature itself. So today, I'd like to actually talk to you about getting started with cost data upload. And this is all about measuring non-Google paid campaigns. So let's talk about what is cost data upload. Um, I'll kind of get into a little bit more, more about what that means and what cost data upload works, how it works in the feature itself. Um, then we'll go into ArcTouch overview, which explains uh, the deep details, and also how you would actually go about uploading data to Google Analytics. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about uh, some opportunities that are available from a developer perspective and also from a business perspective. OK, so with that, we'll get started. So what is cost data upload? And what does cost data itself mean? Um, so this is all related to all the paid campaigns that you may be running out there, all the information that's related to that paid campaign, whether it be ad cost, clicks, impressions, the name of the campaign. All of this itself relates to cost data, um, is what we refer to as cost data in Google Analytics. Um, so for example, if you, have, um, running, if you are running uh, campaigns today with Google AdWords, for example, um, you'll know this is pretty familiar for you. Um, you've got cost data. And if you link that to Google Analytics, which is what you should be doing, um, you actually get these reports within Google Analytics that highlight um, for your paid campaigns uh, how they're performing. And they give you a lot more information around uh, how to optimize certain keywords, maybe landing page optimization. And these things are important things. But to really do this analysis, you need that cost data associated with the campaigns that you're running in Google AdWords. Uh, and this linking works really well today. And it takes care of all that for you. And it gives you some powerful tools to do that, uh, to carry out analysis around campaigns and user interaction, how those how campaigns are performing. The thing is, though, for a lot of people, um, why we encourage you to use Google AdWords, we, we love Google AdWords, obviously. Uh, there is other paid campaign services uh, out there uh, that people obviously use. And that includes things like other paid search services. You might be running a campaign on a social network. You might be doing uh, email marketing campaigns. So all of, this, um, all of these campaigns are running out there, and you're getting users visiting your website or your property from these paid campaigns. And that's great. You're able to track what they're doing, the conversions possibly that are taking place, goal completions. Uh, and you're getting a good general sense of, of which paid campaigns are driving traffic to your site. And this is great. So uh, a report like this that I'm showing here right now is, is kind of common that you're looking at, OK, for my particular campaigns, how, you know, how are they performing and what kind of traffic is coming to my site uh, because of these campaigns. Now you see that first row there, row number one, uh, is a Google AdWords campaign. And you'll notice while you have user interaction data such as visits, you don't get the, um, and you have impressions and clicks cost data, you don't get the same kind of uh, visual um, and cost data that you would have uh, for AdWords. You don't get the same data for the other paid campaigns that you might have. So for example, we have an AdWords ne network campaign running, and we have an affiliate network uh, campaign running. And you'll see we know people are coming to the site, but we don't actually know, uh, we don't have the cost data within GA to do that analysis. There's kind of two things missing around this then is for the particular paid campaign itself, being able to analyze that in terms of the ROI and the metrics you might be getting, um, uh, click through rate, cost per click, things like that, you kind of miss out on that. And then also, you don't really have the ability to compare how these services um, are performing against each other. So, you know, is the AdWords network driving more, better conversions, or Google AdWords driving better conversions? So, you're missing that kind of complete view, that complete analysis around uh, your cost data. Uh, and across all of your different paid campaigns that you might be having for all online advertising and digital marketing. But cost data kind of solves that problem. Um, when we launched this feature about a month ago, we had uh, some success stories right off the bat with a couple of customers uh, working with partners of ours to get something in place and a solution for them. So for example, we, we talked to Next Analytics and Carnal Path, and they came up with a solution that uses cost data upload. Uh, and they worked with Natural Wellbeing. And really, it was more around fully automating this process for them. So being able to take their cost data automatically, uh, export it, and upload that into Google Analytics using this new feature. Uh, and it worked really well for them and saving them a lot of time in, in, in doing this full automation. We also did the same thing um, with ShufflePoint and Enor. They came up with a solution uh, using cost data upload, uh, again, uh, to help OEM PC world. And this one was really about, uh, again, fully automation. And you know, a lot of the analysis they were doing was kind of a manual process where you'd had, you had your Google Ad AdWords data. You had some other paid campaigns. They had to manually bring that stuff together and do analysis uh, outside of GA. So this new feature really allowed them to bring all that into Google Analytics and to do that complete analysis uh, within the product itself. 
to save them a lot of time, fully automated, a uh, great solution for them. So I think it'd be good just to start off with a, a quick demo to show you how this actually works. And then we'll kind of dive into details, and I can give you a little bit more uh, background on how this, these actual steps that are involved to do this. Um, sometimes it's just easier to show you how it works. Um, so I'll start off with uh, a report. This is within Google Analytics. Um, it's a custom report. And the example here is that I, I'm, you know, I have an, uh, I'm using a paid, I have a paid search uh, ad running, and it's for an ad network. It's, it's a CPC, and it's for the keyword dog bone. And I can see, I've, I've, so I've tagged my URLs, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so I know that someone's clicked on the URL, and they've visited my, my uh, property. And I can see that there's been two visits. But just as how I described before, we don't have any cost data here. But the thing is, I actually do have the cost data. The service provider that I'm using is, allows me to export the cost data. Uh, I just don't have it in GA. So that's really what I want to do. I want to have that same data available in GA so I can do analysis and, and carry out um, cost analysis. So just the, something to note here, the source is ad network, the medium is CPC, and the keyword is dog bone. So as I mentioned, I actually do have this cost data. So you can um, imagine that I exported this from the paid search provider and uh, have it in CSV file. And there's a header up here that you know, has some dimensions that I'll, I'll explain later. Um, but in row two, we can see the same values that I just showed you in the report are actually here. We have ad network as a source, CPC is our medium, and we have this keyword here, dog bone. And there's that cost data I was talking about. We have uh, impressions, we have clicks, and we have ad cost. So I have this data. It's there. It's available. And there's a couple other keywords that I ran also. Um, now let's actually upload it and see how this process works. And, and then we'll see if the, uh, once, once it's available in the report, you'll see how it's actually joined together. So I have a little script. It's a Python script um, just to kind of test things and, and see how it's working. How the feature works. Um, I'll start off with there's this new entity called custom data source. And again, I'll explain what this means in a little bit. But basically, you upload the cost data to a custom data source. Um, and you, you specify which date you'd like to upload the cost data for. So in this example, uh, this cost data actually is from yesterday. So I, I exported all of the cost data and metrics from yesterday into a CSV file, uh, and it's available to upload. So I'm going to select the custom data source that I want to upload to. I'll show you how this process works. So I have quite a few accounts here. I want to upload to the My Store account. I will select the web property. And then here's what I'm talking about in terms of custom data sources. I have three set up. And I'm just going to choose the first one, the Ad Network custom data source. Okay. So now I've selected it. If I go back up, you'll see, you'll see now that it's, it's actually selected here, Ad Network and then also the account and the web property. And then the upload date, again, is 2012, uh, November uh, uh, 28th. So I will do an upload of cost data, which is number three here. I know the file that I just showed you, what the name of it is. OK, so oops, spelled that wrong. OK, so it's actually uploading right now to Google Analytics to that custom data source. And if all goes successful, we'll get a response back from the server saying it was a success. Okay. So it takes a little bit of time to process the data. It's not going to show up instantly. I will go back to the presentation. Um, it could take anywhere from a few minutes to up to 12 hours. So you should see data within 12 hours. Um, uh, depending on the kind of load in, in your profile and the web property, um, it could take a little bit longer. I'm going to actually go back to the presentation. Uh, we've successfully uploaded cost data. I'll come back a little bit later, and we'll see if it's available in the report uh, and if it's been joined to our actual uh, campaign. In the meantime, let's talk about architectural overview, how this feature works, and how you'd actually go about uh, uploading cost data. So there's quite a few steps um, involved, but they're all pretty simple. Um, the first four are really around how to prepare uh, and, and for a successful upload. And the fifth is really around reporting and how you would do analysis, uh, the, the tools that are available for that uh, within GA. Let's start with tagging campaign URLs. So obviously, the primary, primary benefit to this, this feature is that you're able to join that user interaction data that's already in GA that you have, and you're able to join that with the cost data that might sit somewhere externally. So bringing those two together is really the huge benefit here. 
but in order to do that, it's important that, the, that you use campaign tracking parameters. So you should be doing this anyways. Um, but the, the important part of this is that the campaign tracking parameters, the values you use as part of the campaign, should or have to match the values that you're uploading through cost data um, upload feature. So I'll explain a little bit more in detail what this means. Um, but uh, basically, the, it's, they have to match. And if they match, then they'll actually get joined together in that case. So in this example here, I have an ad running. It's actually on, it's not a Google ad. It's, a, it's an, uh, another paid search provider. I have um, the link there is actually, uh, actually has UTM parameters as part of it, these campaign tracking parameters. And I've specified an ad network, CPC is a medium, the campaign is summer sale. And again, the term is dog bone. So you've seen uh, these values throughout. And we'll kind of explain how this all works now. OK. So you've tagged your URLs. All your destination URLs for all your paid campaigns are tagged. And again, this is not for Google AdWords. Google AdWords has a different mechanism for uploading cost data. Uh, you just link your profile um, to your analytics account, and that'll take care of itself. This is for non-Google paid campaigns, just something to keep in mind. Uh, but once you've tagged those URLs, uh, the next thing you want to do is actually get the data out of the external source and prepare it as a CSV file to upload. So let's take a look at what that means. So the first thing is, what can you actually upload? So there's quite a few different dimensions um, and three metrics that uh, you can provide values for through cost data upload. There's actually nothing new here in terms of dimensions and metrics. So these use existing AdWords dimensions and metrics that you've seen and are probably familiar with. Uh, so there's nothing new there. So if you have any reports set up, like custom reports around performance of paid campaigns, uh, those don't have to be changed once you start uploading cost data. Uh, any zero values that you had before will just automatically be populated with this data that you've uploaded. Uh, for the dimensions, there are two that are required, which are source and medium. And then for metrics, there's uh, three of them. And only one is required. Uh, one of the three is required. Uh, for any ones that are omitted, you'll just, we'll just assume it's a value of zero, basically, for those. So this is the important part here. Uh, we, you know, we talked about the tagging of the URLs, and this is why it's important. This is how the data actually gets joined and mapped together. So you have all your user interaction data sitting in GA already today, and you're doing that through normal measurement that you've already done uh, all the time. So that's, that's taken care of. Now you're uploading cost data. And then what's going to happen is the, the, the campaign tracking parameters, the values you use there, and the ones you upload, if there's a match there, then the data will get joined together. And this is why it's important that these things are consistent across the two. Also, there is a specific case um, in terms of um, the case that is required for these things. The keyword is, is case insensitive. So uh, it doesn't matter if the keyword is capitalized or not. Uh, they'll get jo joined regardless. But the other uh, four dimensions are case sensitive. Um, so you got to be careful there and make sure these values are consistent um, in that regard. Also, it's up to you really to determine the naming conventions that are used in the external system. It's quite possible that um, the naming convention used by this external source might be a little bit different and not exactly match up with the namings that we use for our dimension uh, within GA. So it's kind of up to you to look at what's available from external provider and map and see how that maps these dimensions and, and, and the values that you need to provide for these dimensions. Um, it's kind of up to you to do that. And usually, it's a one-step kind of process. Once you've got it set up, then you don't have to really worry about it anymore. But um, identifying those, those mappings at first is kind of uh, is really important. OK. So we know what we can upload. Um, let's take a look at actually what you would upload. So I showed you a CSV file before. Uh, here's another example. Um, so this is for aggregates, right? This is, you're, you're uploading aggregate data uh, on a daily basis. For That's usually the, the typical use case. Um, so best practice then is really to wait till the end of the day and then upload cost data, or upload cost data for the previous day, because you want to upload it in aggregate. And you upload for a specific date. You say, I'm going to upload for yesterday or the day before, and, and so on. Again, you'll notice here that the values I have for the source and medium match the values that I use in my uh, URLs for my campaigns as part of the campaign tracking parameters. And those should always be consistent. And then you have your actual metrics here, your cost data itself, the impressions, ads, and clicks. And in this case, I provided values for all three because I had them available. And then, of course, you saw the list of, of all the dimensions that are available. Those can be included also. There is quite a few different constraints and um, requirements around what needs to be provided and the values you can provide. These are all available on our uh, developer site, which I provide uh, some links later for you guys. OK. So we've tagged our campaign URLs with campaign tracking parameters. 
we've got our CSV file that we exported out from the external source, and we've prepared it properly. Um, and now we have to create a data source. Remember, we have to upload to a custom data source. So we have to create that. Uh, and that's actually done through the web interface. Okay. So actually, I'll show you, show you how that actually is done um, right now. And then I'll explain how exactly what this works. So it's at the web property level. Um, you'll notice in, we're currently doing whitelisting. So some of you may have this, some of you may not. Um, but it will be all rolled out to everybody in the next week or so, I think. So if you go to the web property level in the admin panel, you'll see a tab called Custom Definitions. Okay. So I already have three um, custom data sources available in here. And I'm going to create a new one. So I'll show you how it's done. So a new custom data source. Right. You can imagine, just say I want to have one for, let's say, email marketing. So I'll email, email marketing campaigns. Okay. You specify the type. This is where uploading cost data, that's the type. And then we link a profile. The linking profiles allows, uh, will enable this cost data to be available for those profiles. You can imagine you might have like 100 profiles here. You can select which ones you want. There's a little search box to make it a little bit easier. Uh, and then you just select which profiles you would like the cost data to show up in. You click Create. And you'll see now I have a new custom data source for email marketing campaigns. And the important thing here is there's an ID. And you actually need that ID to do uploads. And we'll sh I'll show you how, that, how that's done. I'll go back to the presentation. So let's look at what it, what's the custom data source and how does it relate to the Google Analytics model. I think you're probably mostly familiar with this. We have, this is the way GIA is set up today. We have web properties. That's where all the user uh, interaction data is collected. That's the level it's collected at. Uh, and then we have profiles. And the profiles basically act as views of that data. So you can have one for maybe for marketing. You might have one for sales. Or certain, certain filters apply that you want to have different views of your, of your web property uh, user interaction data. What's been introduced with custom uh, cost data upload is custom data sources. So this resource. Um, it kind of acts as representing external data sources. You could have a single or multiple uh, external data sources per custom data source. It's up to you. Um, you can have multiple web, uh, custom data sources under a web property. Um, I would say as a best practice, I would create a custom data source per external data source. Um, it's just a little bit easier to manage, um, and it allows you to kind of separate uh, data from across the different sources that you might have. It's really important that you link a profile. So this, as I showed you before, when you link profiles, it enables that data to be available within those reports. If you don't have that linking, then the cost data will not show up in reports. So in this case, we have an example here where we've created a custom data source, and it's linked to two profiles, profile one and profile three. So those two will show data, and profile two will not show any cost data from that custom data source. In addition to that, we have what we call daily upload resources. These kind of represent the actual data you've uploaded to GA on a per daily basis, a per date basis. So you'd have one for each day, a resource, and these are important. They store information around which custom data source they belong to, and also a metadata around uh, recent changes that have taken place with these with this particular resource. So someone uploaded to it, deleted it. You get that kind of change log history. And it's part of that resource. You manage and create custom data sources within the UI. And you actually upload cost data using an API. Um, you can actually also look at the history of a daily upload uh, resource within the UI. I'll show you that by going um, to the history. There's a little history link here. You can kind of get it for that custom data source. You can see all the changes that have taken place. And then you can actually get per day, you can see all the changes that have taken place. Okay. Also, from an, um, a creation standpoint and deletion, you need to be an admin. So admins, anything with modification to a resource, whether it's created or deleted, uh, is an admin. And viewers, um, just regular users, can view data, but they can't do anything around creating or deleting or uploading. So it's important. OK, so we showed you how to create a data source. So let's recap. We've got our URLs uh, tagged with campaign tracking parameters. We've got our CSV file that's prepared, and uh, which was exported out from the external source. We've created a custom data source um, within the, using the web interface. Now we actually want to upload the cost data. And we use this, the API to, to carry this out. So here's an example in Python. It's pretty, it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, you create a media, media file upload object, and you specify the CSV file. 
And then you actually just call the upload uh, method for the daily uploads resources. And you specify a few parameters that are required. Uh, and you execute that. And it'll uh, automatically upload the file for you and respond with a, um, a 200 if successful. If there was an error, typically, I think when people first start out with this, they get errors around the file formatting for the CSV. Um, the errors are really descriptive, so they, can, they really help you out in terms of figuring out what the problems are. Okay. There's also a few other operations you can to carry out. You can list which daily uploads. Uh, this gives you your history and changes. And you can look up to for a year of, of history. You can look at uh, what's taken place. And then we also have a delete method. Is if you want to get rid of data completely, you can actually delete it out of the daily resource. And this is important because the way the cost data is stored within GA is actually stored separately outside of your user interaction data. So this is great because you can kind of upload. You want to, if you want to delete something, it doesn't actually touch any of your user interaction data. So feel free to upload and delete and without any worrying about um, corrupting or, or um, having any effect on your user interaction data. It's already there. All right, so once you've kind of done that and you've actually successfully uploaded cost data and it's been processed, you'll have the, the data available in your reports. So going back to the start of our uh, presentation, uh, now the magic's happened. We have, um, before we had zero values for the cost data, and you can see now when you've done it properly, this actual cost data will get joined. And the reports that you would normally see zeros now show you the campaign visits are now joined and associated with that uploaded cost data which gives you all these nice other additional metrics, calculated metrics around margin, ROI, and things like that. So now you can do your complete ROI analysis across all of your different paid campaigns. Reporting is available uh, a few different ways. We have um, the API, of course. You can you continue to use the core reporting API to pull uh, metrics out. Uh, the, like I said before, the dimensions and metrics haven't changed. So any reports you might have been running before will work just as they did before. There's no, there's no changes to be made. And then from the web interface, we have uh, there's kind of two main options, which are you can build a custom report, or you can do uh, there's a new cost analysis report under traffic sources. And the cost analysis report, this is what it looks like. Um, it's, it's actually just for cost data upload. It was it was created for that. And then for custom reports, let's just see if our data that I had uploaded has been processed. So let's refresh this, and yes, you can see uh, that was the cost data we uploaded uh, at the start of the presentation. It has been joined to my campaign uh, visits for that particular keyword. And we can now see uh, impressions, clicks, and costs. And of course, you could do, uh, there's some calculated metrics like cost per click, and you could add those to your custom reports. So great, it worked. All right. So some of the opportunities are, um, for developers, you have an opportunity to build a connector. Uh, there's kind of two steps to this, I would say. There's initial setup, uh, which is kind of just creating a custom data source. But then there's two cases that you really got to consider one is historical upload. You'll notice when I did the upload, I uploaded to actually yesterday. It was for, for data for the 28th. And um, you can actually upload data all the way back to 2005. So if you've been tagging your campaign URLs over the last you know, seven years, you can actually go back and export that data and upload that. It's a little bit different use case, because typically when you export, you're going to export a large uh, chunk of data from your system. And then you have to individually upload that for each day. So that initial historical upload is a little bit different use case. Uh, but the API really allows you to automate all of that. And then going forward, there's an opportunity to build a connector that pulls the data down from the external source automatically and uploads it to GA. If you're not, or if you don't really have the development resources, or you just like to get started, we do have uh, four partners that have built integrations with this using this feature. Next Analytics, GA Data Uploader, uh, Analytics Canvas, and ShelfPoint all have um, great integrations. And you know, depending on your requirements, I think any one of them will be able to solve um, a lot of different use cases. So I definitely encourage you to check these out in our app gallery. So to finish up here, we have uh, just a few resources for you. We'll include these links at the bottom of the video for you. Um, but any, all of this is available on our uh, developer site, which is developers.google.com slash analytics. And we also have the app gallery, uh, which is google.com slash analytics slash apps. All right, thank you very much. And uh, you can start uploading. I think if we have some questions, we'll take some questions. All right, so taking a quick look at the moderator, we have a few questions. Uh, one of them is from John, who says, he's played around a little bit with uploading cost data, and his campaigns don't seem to be matching up. Are the UTM parameters case sensitive? Yeah, yeah, I think I touched on this earlier. Um, the, so the keyword is normalized to lowercase no matter what. So that one's um, that one you don't have to worry about case. But for the other ones, you do have to worry about uh, case sensitivity. 
um, those will affect what gets matched up. But again, because the data is stored separately, you know, go ahead, upload things, uh, and you'll see if you do have a problem, you simply just delete the data. It doesn't affect any of your user interaction data, so there's no problem there. And Andrew asks, are we going to be able to apply advanced segments to upload a cost data? So because you're uploading um, aggregate totals for a day, it's not on a session basis. So you can't actually do um, the advanced segments like you would. Um, it actually acts exactly the same way that AdWords is today, which is uh, advanced segments would not apply for this particular case. All right, so thank you very much for uh, taking the time joining me today about learning about cost data upload. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.